Admiral's Log The currents of diplomacy have carried us into treacherous waters, and the year 1941 finds us grappling with a web of complex relationships that threaten to entangle the world in a spiral of conflict. Relations with the French, once a beacon of camaraderie, have now faltered, reaching a critical point where peace hangs precariously in the balance. The repercussions of this delicate situation are profound, for failure to find resolution may plunge the United States into a maelstrom of war, entangling us not only with the Russians, the Chinese and the Italians, but now the French as well. As I stand before the strategic map in my quarters, I contemplate the gravity of our predicament. Each decision weighs heavily upon my conscience, and the fate of nations rests upon the shoulders of the United States Navy. In these uncertain times, my heart yearns for a peaceful resolution, but I am acutely aware that our path forward must be guided by wisdom, diplomacy, and unwavering resolve. Hey guys, still here, and welcome to episode 7. This is the US campaign, where so far we've been at war with the Russians. But now that 1941 has swung around and I only needed one more point to go to war with France, well, it looks like the war is here. They've sent us an ultimatum, demanding us to withdraw our fleet that's operating near their borders. I'm not sure what fleet they're referring to because I don't have any fleet near their borders. Although, if you have an empire the size of France, especially with all their colonies, I'm going to be operating near their borders one way or another. Um, it's an absolute disgrace. We should not accept this. Um, and if they want war, so be it. I can also pay half a billion dollars for my naval funds. And that's going to placate the French. Or if we offer them general, or, well, generous compensation of one and a half billion, they're going to have a plus 20. But I don't want that. Um, I am not willing to accept this. I am willing to accept some unrest. But I am not going to give the French either half a billion or one and a half billion. So here we go. Uh, masses of dissatisfied pacifists, of course, don't like that. They are protesting and block the roads. Uh, what do you propose to do? I will offer financial aid to the needy. This is definitely more expensive than the situation would be if I were to give the French half a billion dollars or one and a half. This is going to cost me 1.9, but I believe it's the right thing to do. Because this is the population of the United States. This is the population that I, as the Admiral, have sworn a duty to protect. So, I don't mind spending 1.9 billion from my naval funds to get a bit of prestige, to stabilize the relationships with the Germans, the Austro-Hungarians, the Japanese and the Spanish, and to negate all the unrest that I have caused by going into this war. And so, it's begun. So I'm now at war with China, Russia, and the French. Oh, and the Italians. Did I mention the Italians? Plenty of targets. Now, the situation is going to be very interesting. Because now, all of a sudden, I'm dealing with a potential superpower. Which is something that I haven't had to do yet. The Russians and their fleet is not something I would consider a superpower. The French, with their 111 ships, are. Interestingly, they seem to have gone for a small navy. Not necessarily numerically small, but definitely one small by nature, focusing heavily on light cruisers and destroyers. They're looking to double that size. Whether they're building 118 more smaller ships, or they're... I don't know, they got 118 battleships on the slipways. I don't know. Now, the real question is, where are the French going to send their fleet? How much of a threat are they going to pose? As the French have plenty of colonies here. Here's a bit of their group. I've seen another one here. It's just one light cruiser. I can handle that. I mean, I can easily handle this as well. There's a heavy, there's another light. Oh, they're doing the whole dispersing thing. Well, I think the British over here might be able to do something useful. Because this, if this clashes, that could resolve itself. So I don't need to look too deeply into that. No, it is France itself 
that has me concerned. Wait, what? Oh, that's the English Channel. I was looking at La Havre, actually. There's nobody in La Havre. Uh, anybody here? Nope. Even La Rochelle is empty. They got one light cruiser there. One there. Is the whole French Navy gone to the Caribbean again? No. Anybody seen the French Navy? Because I haven't. Ah, found them. Here's a French battleship. Nine heavy cruisers and 20 destroyers. Their destination is the Bay of Biscay. So they're going to be going all the way over there. Which doesn't necessarily interest me. Because I don't have any beef with them there. I am still on target to invade Northern Finland. Which is just protected by one light cruiser and 25,000 Russian soldiers. I don't believe it is actually theirs. And I believe that they should leave this place. So Northern Finland only requires 67,000 tons. I have substantially more than that. Now when it comes to dealing with all these different powers at the same time. I think it's time to start sending out both of these ships. North Carolina and Kansas. The thing is they're relatively older in 1936. Making them what? Five years old? Yeah. So let's do a quick overhaul. Make sure that these things are up to, let's say, somewhat more modern standards. I believe the hull is not yet out of date. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be the case fairly soon. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That turret just got a lot bigger, didn't it? <sighs> it's nice having the Mark IVs. The problem is, these things are so big that they don't necessarily fit on the ship anymore. Now, considering that the French and the Chinese and the Russians are using relatively small ships, I don't mind downsizing these guns. Because I'm thinking 13-inch guns might do the trick just as well. Because these things have enough pen. They have a reload of 36.8 seconds. Uh, the 14s had... 46 seconds. Hold on, is that the duel? Correction, 40.8. So let's go to 13s and see if I can fit those. Uh, no. I can, in fact, not. Yes, there it is. I can fit those. Excellent. That's going to take five months to refit. Which is, of course, unsurprising, considering I'm refitting the entire turret array. I also want to upgrade these to have better diesel engines. I want to give them better oil. Um, this means that they still have a fairly high amount of displacement that they can get. Let's go up to Modern Armor 1. Which potentially introduces more flaws into the ship. But I think I can make do. It also means that the armor is a lot lighter. And that is very handy. Now these things are not exactly going to be going anytime. Uh, or are going to be going anywhere anytime quick. But increasing four knots of speed is nice to do. I think 29 might be overreaching. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to 28 knots. And let's see where we can put the rest. You guys already got the best loaders. Let's get the best turret rotation speed. Let's start getting you guys some radar systems. 27 knots. There we go. After weight offset is only 1%. So that's not too bad. If I just add a touch to the four belts, I can fix that. And this is a ship I'm happy with. Checking ammo types. Oh, triple base. Okay, fine. I should have done that the other way around. Come on. Oh, it's 100 tons overweight. Good lord. That's a bit more than I'd hoped. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because I'm taking off a bit of armor here. You'd think that I lose a lot, but I don't. Because I'm going from 120% armor strength to 140. So that should largely offset any armor that I take off. So this is going to be the North Carolina 1939 refit. Sorry, 1941 refit. And it's going to take my ships or shipyards a couple of months to refit those. But that's fine. I want those things to be capable of taking on the new threats that have arisen. The French, the Italians, the Chinese, and of course, whatever is left of the Russians. 
Of course it wasn't going to take long before we were going to clash with some faction somewhere. And it turns out that the French are first. But it's not just the French. The heavy cruiser Cambridge 1936 Scranton refit with six 9-inch guns is going up against light cruiser Friant. It's a French light cruiser armed with 12 5.3s and quite a lot of torpedo tubes, especially underwaters. She is escorted, or assisted, if you will, by two Portuguese destroyers, which I wouldn't at all be surprised if they were created in France. Seeing as they're the Bordelais class of destroyer, armed with a couple of 5.3s and some torpedo launchers. I only have the destroyer Bush to help me out, which has six 5-inch guns and one quad launcher. Cambridge is faster, so it's going to have to slow down in order to keep the Bush close. Not a battleship fight, but it is definitely going to be good to play around with some of these smaller battles. Because they can be just as fun, if not more so. So here's the Cambridge. Let's have the Cambridge and the Bush work together to engage the threats without torpedoes for now. At 17 kilometers, Cambridge opens fire. Her accuracy at this range is despicable at half a percent chance. So I'm not that eager to have her fire off all of her ammunition with very little chance of actually hitting something. Interestingly, the light cruiser is returning fire. I wasn't really expecting her to be able to already return fire with those, well, relatively small guns. But she is. Cambridge... I don't think it's going to be at any grave risk, not just yet. So far, the shells that are coming in are getting blocked. I want to get this ship out of the smoke screen. Here we go, the three inches are firing. These things barely have any pen. They're mostly there to set fires. So exactly why they're starting with armor-piercing shells, I don't know. Come on. Come on. Hello, destroyer. Looks like the French and the Portuguese might have some communications issues, because this DD is not exactly screening for that ship. Not if you're eight and a half kilometers out. There we go. <clears throat> Three and a half percent chance is what the Cambridge considers enough accuracy to actually do something. So, open fire, and with a P, I think we're going to get a whole lot farther than with HE. Cambridge is on fire. I don't like that one bit. I want to have the DD also engage. Potentially to draw fire. And also to help out with her sonar array. Because I am suspecting that some, <clears throat> if not many, of these 12 torpedo launchers have already been used. To be safe, let's just complete... Hello. Let's just complete a turn. Not a moment too soon. Because that French light is dangerous. And is showing exactly what it can do. Now, most likely, it still has the other side. So, I'm wondering if it's going to turn around. Wait, that was not even your hull launcher, was it? No, sir, that was not the underwater launcher. That was just a simple triple deck launcher. That's all that that was. Okay, new plan. Smoke up the DD, switch to HE, try to destroy the deck launchers so that we might have a slightly safer time approaching this thing without getting met with a... Ah, what do you call that? Like a school of torpedoes, I guess? A murder of torpedoes? What's uh, what's the proper biology term for a, a, a group of the a group of torps? Let's see. What's your turning rate? Your turning rate is not that good. Oh, never mind. Rectified. Next. DD twelve and a half kilometers out. That's optimistic. Turn. Have you sent any parting gifts? No, you have not. Excellent. Good man. How expensive is the Frion? 122 million. Ha! My DDs cost more, dude. <clears throat> Not this one, though. This is only 38 million, but that new DD, about five times the price. 
All right, high explosive. Go and get him. Interesting that both of these are low fuel. That seems to happen a lot. Ships with low fuel. Oh, the three inches have done remarkably good amount, good amount of damage. Very nice. Uh, there we go. That's another extensive fire. Did not launch. Mameluke. Ooh. Try to keep that destroyer alive. Don't need that thing going down. Don't want to give the French the pleasure of being able to claim that they sunk a United States warship. This thing is taking a ton of damage. How much... No, oh, standard bulkheads. You're probably going to come to regret that. <laughs> yeah, right about now. So, that's that. What is next? What is next? Are there any other battles coming up? Or can we focus on the invasions, at least for a bit? It looks like, as the head of the navy, I'm not the only one preparing offensives. I have taken Lithuania, and the army said, hold my beer, and we're gonna take the Lithuanian army against Russia in Belarus. So, uh, yeah, that's ambitious. This is not going very well, by the way. It's a 45% chance to succeed. Um, what is the plan here? <laughs> that's ambitious. 123,000 men against a Russian defender of about half a million. Yeah, good luck with that. Now, the situation here does look a lot better. We are on the verge of liberating the Northern Finland territory. And hopefully that 100% chance to succeed is going to last. If the Russians are able to send any ships, they probably would have done by now. It's one destroyer there, and it's the heavy cruiser in the Kronstadt. So we got one CL and three DDs there. I do have some ships here. Uh, most of my BBs, however, are refitting. No, actually I got Sovereign there. Never mind, I can send these guys out to go cause some mayhem. And potentially have another go at Latvia, although that might be a bit ambitious with 170,000 men defending it. Uh, it doesn't look good for Russia. It doesn't look good for Russia at all. Considering the fact that their biggest ship is a heavy cruiser, I don't fear them that much. Especially with the battleship Sovereign here, the flagship. I don't think they can do a whole lot. But I could be entirely wrong. After a few months of hard fighting, the United States gains control of South Sakhalin. The British, the French, uh, there's a lot of colonial fighting. It doesn't really involve me. This involves me. This concerns me. So this is mine. Uh, with that, again, the port of Korsakov, 163,000 ton port. Moskolova is next. Oh, sorry, Moskalvo. Um, do I have any new ships here? Sadly not. I am still building new ships all the time. And the Long Beach might be very useful to just bolster the amount of tonnage that I need. Unfortunately, she is one of the ships that's currently refitting. So it is back to North Sakhalin that we go. And it is once again our intent to start pushing the Russians out of the east once and for all. Because they got nothing left. Kamchatka has been taken. The eastern Siberian side has been taken. The Russian Far East does have a port in the form of Vladivostok. It also packs a ton of soldiers. So this is going to require potentially a much larger fleet deployment before I'm able to launch an invasion here. But once I do, that last Russian port on this side is eliminated. And as such, the Russians should no longer be able to pose any kind of a threat out in the Far East. As towards the western flank, we are on 75% chance to succeed against the Russian defender over here. Uh, we have 56,000 army force that are still defending the place. I think we'll be able to get it done. But we just have to keep the pressure on. After many months of fierce fighting, the United States gains control of northern Finland. Ideally, of course, I would return this to, well, southern Finland. Sadly, um, I cannot just 
call these people up and say, hey, uh, would you like Northern Finland back? There's no way for me to interact with them. There's no way for me to reach out and offer them their territory back, much like, for example, you could in a game of civilization. So with that out of the question, I think I'm going to have to take my fleet and potentially dock it here for a bit, because some of these ships have taken some damage and probably would benefit from a bit of touch-up, if not a paint job. So where does that leave us? Well, we still have Riga to take, part of Latvia. Um, over in central Russia, the army force is far too substantial for me to even consider it. And if I want to go to the Black Sea, I'm going to have to go through the Dardanelles. Or rather, the channel over here next to the Aegean Sea. I do believe that uh, the Bosporus Strait is controlled by the Ottoman Empire. Are they allied with anybody? Who are the Ottomans friends with? Nobody? No. Oh, the Spanish are at, uh, allied with them. Oh, here we go. Oh, crap. Okay, um, this is going to complicate matters some. The Ottoman Empire, the ones who control access to the Black Sea, are allied with the Russians. So if I want to get at the last couple of ports here, I'm going to have to first punch my way through here. Which is something I do not believe I can do. I don't know if it's possible for me even to take control over this strait somehow. And I don't think I can invade minor nations, really. So this plan is not going to work for the time being. Mm. As such, I could just send this whole task force, considering that they are doing very well on fuel. They just got resupplied over in Klaipeda. Um, yeah, we're going to go to Riga. Again, we're going to go to Riga. We're going to wait for the other fleet to get fixed up, to join us here, and then we're going to once again attempt an invasion and, as such, a liberation of Latvia. Now, after all these invasions, it's time for some actual naval combat. We have four destroyers. Sigsby, Cassin Young, Morris, and Charles F. Adams. They're all of the Morris class. All of the, well, more or less the same year. The enemy is the Novaya Nadezhda. It is armed with a lot of 7.2, well, not that many, 6 to 7 inch guns, um, and it has the destroyer Lebet with it. I want to take this guy down. We can ambush him. We managed to sneak close. What well, exactly the game considers close, I am eager to see. Is that 5 kilometers? Is that 25 kilometers? Uh, everybody hold. 16 clicks out. Well, not great, not terrible. We can probably make this work. We have spotted them. My torpedoes can hit them at 12 kilometer... Doofus. 12 kilometer range. So I should be in range... What are you doing? I should be in range fairly quickly. The question is... Are they going to see me? Ah, uh, yeah, I think they are. Yep, yep, yep. They know exactly where I am. And they're eager to show me. Okay. Um, do we launch? Do we not? New plan. Sigsby. Adams. Separate div. Turn that way. Don't avoid. Don't bother with any of that nonsense. Because your collision avoidance... Generally isn't that good. Are you turning back yet? You're not. Okay, I'm going to try and get something that resembles a crossfire. So I'm going to fire from two different angles, ideally. Hoping that the torpedoes arrive more or less at the same time. So, launch. Launch. One group is about 8 kilometers out. The other one's 8-3. Torps away from Cass and Young. Torps away from Morris. Torps away from Sigsby. 
taking a lot of fire on Sigs. Be turps away from Charles. Now we're going to turn back a little. And see if we can kite this Russian cruiser into the torpedoes. They've returned the pleasure. Returned the favor. And I have immediately spotted said torpedoes going all the way over there. So these probably aren't going to be that big of a deal. My torpedoes aren't that big of a deal either. As they have already managed to suicide. I mean fail. Um, this is going to make life for the Russian cruiser at least interesting. I don't know if they've detected the torps yet. And judging on how the AI is handling this ship, I think they have. My problem with this particular target is that I don't believe four destroyers can adequately overwhelm the damage control parties. So I might need to close in and try and pepper this thing with AP, but my AP isn't very good. Yeah, they definitely know about the torps. Maximum bulkhead, spacious quarters. Overwhelming is not likely to happen. <sighs> that leads me to the other option, which is rushing in and hitting them with a torpedo at some point. Which, well, that too doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. Everybody HE. At least this way we should be able to start trying to get rid of their torpedo launchers. So that the torpedo launchers aren't going to be that big of a threat. Once we have actually closed the distance. And the torpedo launchers might not be the problem. The 4.8 and 3.1 and 2.3 inch guns probably are. So that's enough to get concerned about. Sigsby, what are you doing? You didn't have a damaged rudder before. So I am expecting that you actually follow formations as ordered. Torpedo launcher halfway through reload. This guy is definitely starting to feel the hurt from the fires. And the continuous impacts from my ships. Destroyer Lebed, I think I can largely safely ignore for now. Because she's not actually doing much. She's already spent all of her torpedoes. And at this point, really all she can do is hope to engage me with her 4.8. Which apparently is not in range. And she does not seem to be making... Well, it is now. She does not seem to be making a whole lot of effort to try and get that thing into range. Okay, I think we might be interfering with our own accuracy now due to the smoke screen. They just launched torpedoes at me. Turn again. 81% structural. What if we fire armor piercing at this range? It's 7 kilometers out. I can pen 1.7 inches of armor. Yeah, that... What? 162% armor quality? You got modern 1. Wow. That's no joke, dude. That's serious levels of protection. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, we're all so close together that everybody's getting hit at the same time. Destroy the main gun? Really? Tell me more. Yeah, the stern 7-incher is out. <laughs> okay. Unexpected outcome. The 7 incher should have plenty of armor. But I guess it's not enough. Okay. What has done most damage here? Because I'm thinking it might be the smaller guns at this point. Not yet. No, it's the 7s. Okay, set some fires. And start lining up. Because I'm going to have to everybody launch to... Torpedoes, you don't have torps anymore. Sigsby, just disengage, would you? Like your odds of actually surviving here are diminishing by the minute. <clears throat> Ship is down to 60%. Lots of compartments are now on fire. 28% of the crew has been killed. And she dies due to extensive fires. Would you look at that. 
This is your target, gentlemen. Open fire against the Lebed. She's only firing armor piercing, and it seems to be more than a plenty to start dealing a lot of damage to the Trolls F Adams. But hey, I took down a heavy cruiser, so I'm already ahead. These things are expensive, yes? 132 million. Ah, uh, okay. Not great, not terrible. Hold on a second there. The Charles is taking way more damage than I want her to. How much armor you got? A lot. Go to armor piercing. Off. Ow, 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 ow. There we go. Now we're switching to armor piercing. This thing gets melted down in 20 seconds or something. So, that at least was a good result. Quick bit of fighting, making sure that the enemy no longer has a cruiser and a destroyer. And I gained well over 100 times the amount of victory points that they did. So, that's the Russians once again getting put in their place. Now, there have been some negotiations taking place, but my government and the Russian government don't see eye to eye just yet. And as such, the war continues, which, well, I don't mind, actually, because it does give me more opportunity to create more stability in the world by taking more territory away from the Russians. I am expecting more clashes with the French, considering their numbers, so there's plenty more to come. The real question is, where is that fight going to be? Because the French have a lot of territory in Southeast Asia. They just don't have a lot of power projection. So, potentially, just sending a couple ships over here might force the French to come to me. But I don't really want them to because I'm still busy here. It's going to be an interesting couple of months. It's going to be an interesting couple of years. So be sure to join me next time because this fight is far from over. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for more videos.